Today we look at the efficiency of Lego Technic and not Technic motors, something we did not get to in the definitive motor test. The ratio of output to input describes the efficiency of a system. In this case, a motor that outputs one watt of mechanical power from two watts of electrical power has 50% efficiency. With the previous setup, we could derive the mechanical power from the torque curve, but we could not see the electrical power without additional equipment. Here we have a multimeter on voltage wired in parallel and a multimeter on current wired in series. Multiplying the voltage and the current will give us the input power. I originally intended to test with this exact setup, but it seemed like the speed controller produced lower than 9 volts with some noticeable fluctuation. As such, we decided to obtain a regulated power supply, and we were recommended this DROC unit, a DC to DC boost converter with an adjustable output, which goes for 30 bucks on Amazon. I connected the device to mains power using an old PC power supply. The 80 watt overall limit on the DROC and the higher 12 volt limit on the PSU should both be more than enough for testing any LEGO motor. The boost converter also has its own voltage, current, and power display, which I cross-checked with a multimeter. At this point, I discovered that my analog multimeter actually reads low, accounting for the voltage drop, though not the fluctuation on the speed controller. But I still decided not to go back. The graphs we made before most likely overstate motor performance toward the stalled torque. Because we only sampled a small amount of the range and extrapolated the rest. While the torque curve should theoretically be a straight line, it will typically bend down in practice due to the voltage drop and current limits on various LEGO power sources, including the speed controller itself. Tests with the boost converter will overstate performance further due to the more regulated voltage and more available current, though not by much. These tests should also be more rigorous for the same reasons. This chart shows how torque curves drawn with speed controller data consistently have a slightly steeper slope than those drawn with boost converter data. Because of the variance we saw between old M motors, we tried testing a new M motor sourced from a sealed 9397 that we hope to review in the future. Interestingly, the performance of this new unit did not vary that much from the average performance of the used units that we tested before. With that in mind, we can finally look at some efficiency curves. We already got mechanical power in the last video, and the boost converter gives us electrical power for free. This forms a straight line because current increases linearly with torque 
at a constant voltage. Efficiency peaks where the percent difference between the mechanical and electrical power curve is the smallest, typically in the first third of the torque range. In the case of this new M motor, the 9 volt efficiency peaks at around 3 newton centimeters. With regulated voltage, we can spot check more data more closely against phylos. For example, we can run the 74127 geared motor at exactly 2.25 newton centimeters, uh, 143 grams on the scale, and measure or derive the same values. I tested the heavy and clear geared motors as well as the PFM. I felt pretty good about our speed, current, and power values, but error gets compounded when calculating the efficiency, so those numbers look worse than the others. For this video, I retested the PF and not PF motors with the boost converter. The not M motor is new like the real one. The efficiency is a real mixed bag with the not XL motor performing better than the real one, the not L motor performing similar to the real one, and the not M motor performing worse than the real one. This is again, as far as I know, the first time anyone has plotted these graphs. I also tested some older motors. Uh, in addition to the heavy and clear geared motors I used for the spot check, I also tested two more units that Philo did not test. The BB0129 freestyle motor and a 4.5 volt train motor. Since these don't have the same mounting pattern as the power functions motors, I had to mount them on a separate stand and connect them to the prony brake with universal joints, which might skew the results a little bit. For these motors, I also plotted the torque and power curves because we did not do so before. These older motors deliver much less torque and power than any of the PF motors, with the freestyle motor being particularly weak. Do remember that the torque and power curves say little about efficiency though. As far as that goes, the heavy geared motor slaps and the old train motor sucks. The clear geared motor and the freestyle motor don't seem that efficient either, possibly due to the large number of gears inside both units. The 4.5 volt motor might have the same problem on top of being much older and therefore more worn. I wanted to test the ungeared 9 volt and 4.5 volt motors, but I need to redesign the prony brake to handle the higher RPM and lower torque. I also wanted to test some powered up motors, but I need to hack up some third party extension cables to connect them to the boost converter. There's also the buggy motor, which may require a high speed and high torque prony brake. Finally, I would caution that all the graphs here come from single samples. 
Uh, for example, I only tested the middle L motor from last time rather than test all three L motors and average the results. The results should still be broadly representative, but motor to motor variation could explain differences in spot check values as well. Anyway, let us know in the comments what else you want to see tested. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.